I'm teaching a course, uh, a signature course called Human Nature and Human Diversity. The plan for this course is to give students an opportunity to get one kind of introduction to cognitive science. So the areas we're going to focus on are mating, uh, human mating, love and parenting, morality, religion and race. The cognitive science part is the part that tries to explain why we find these uh, features of human nature and human diversity. The philosophy part asks questions about their implications. Perhaps a topic that students don't initially think of uh, under the heading of diversity, namely moral diversity. How do we go about uh, deciding moral issues? To what extent do reason and other factors play a role in moral judgments? Issues like abortion, gay marriage, and getting students to realize that what they see in their own communities is only a small slice of the moral diversity uh, around the world. One of the most heated and visible debates is whether religion is a good thing. Dawkins suggests that religions are, uh, as he likes to put it, a certain kind of virus of the mind. Packets of information, packets of ideas that infect the mind in a way very similar to the way uh, that a virus infects the body. And of course religions evolve, Dawkins points out, as it were for their own interests, just as a virus evolves for its own interest. What we'll be looking at is that theory, to be sure, that religions are a virus of the mind, uh, but also a range of rather more sophisticated theories. And indeed, one of the hopes of the course is to encourage the students to develop that sort of expertise themselves uh, because it helps in analyzing moral debates. It helps in analyzing debates uh, of the sort that we'll also be focusing on in the course. The fourth topic that we take up in my signature course in, on human nature and human diversity is race. And race is a deeply puzzling phenomenon because there's a profound sense in which race doesn't exist. Why do we think they do? Uh, why is a belief in racialism, a belief that some people are black and some people are white and some people are Asian and that these people are different, why is it so persistent? A partial answer that one hears a lot is, well, races are social constructions, and that's true. But cognitive science brings a much deeper perspective to this because it asks not merely uh, is it the case that races, since they're not biological entities, they're not biological groupings, they're socially constructed groupings, why are they so stable? Why are they so easy to spot? One of the, the things that I, I appreciate most about teaching at Rutgers is there are students of every race, but nonetheless, there's no real category there. Uh, it's a socially constructed category. Why is it so stable? What does that diversity have to teach us uh, about philosophical questions which have been debated in some cases since antiquity? The course, for the most part, is not going to aim at providing the students with answers. Rather, what its aim is uh, is to provide the students with tools, tools for better thinking about these controversies, for analyzing them more clearly, for recognizing important questions that need to be answered and need to be answered empirically using the tools of psychology and neuroscience and anthropology and history. To deal with those controversial questions, I think students need to have the skills uh, of analyzing these questions uh, that the course tries to inculcate. Mm -hmm.